Hello everyone, for First Updates Now, I'm Tyler Olds and you're watching Behind the Bumpers. It's fun show where we dive deeper into robots and what makes them work. And today I'm here with team number 1746, Otto out of Cumming, Georgia. Otto dates back to the 2006 season with the Rookie All-Star Award and has perennially been one of the top teams out of Peachtree District, especially since 2016, with four district event wins, a championship district winner in 2017, four district event finalists with a district championship finalist in 2019, and also a championship division finalist in 2019 as well. In the 2020 season, they did get a chance to play at the Gainesville District event where they were event finalists. And to help me talk about this team and this awesome robot today is gonna to be Ethan, Cord, Parker, and Avery, and we'll be diving deeper into their new 2021 robot and the changes they made from the season and lessons learned from their 2020 robot. All this and more coming up on Behind the Bumpers. Giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. We would like to thank our friends at Striker for supporting fun so we can continue to make content for you. Striker makes some of the most revolutionary medical equipment and is a big supporter of FIRST and its participants. If you are looking for an internship or a career that supports you being in FIRST, check out careers.stryker.com to learn more. If your team or organization is hosting an off-season event, did you know you can stream it right here on FIRST Updates Now for free? Events that stream on FIRST Updates Now receive an additional 25 to 100% additional viewership because we help you promote your event on a large platform. If you're interested, reach out to us on any of our social platforms, on Discord, or send us an email at admin at firstupdatesnow.com. Let's get your off-season event streaming on First Updates Now. Hurry, dates are booking fast, and we take first come, first serve for all our events. So, Ethan, talk to me a bit more about your strategy going into the 2021 season. How did you approach it, and what changes were made as you were uh, looking at the at-home challenges as well? Yeah, so of course going into this season, while the game objectives uh, were designed to be relatively similar, of course, I think every team knew in, in order to be competitive in the skills challenges, uh, a lot of the objectives were actually really different. So for example, we went with an entirely new bot for our 2021 season. Uh, a major goal of ours was to be competitive in pretty much every single of the five events. At least that was one of our design intentions. As a result, we wanted to be light, we wanted to, we wanted to be maneuverable, and we wanted to have a small frame. So this robot's 24 by 24. Uh, it has a swerve drive like many of the other teams. Uh, and of course, or I guess one of the more unique things that we went with was actually we, we kind of want to be cost effective and be self-reliant in terms of manufacturability. So the vast majority of this one is actually produced in-house, whether on a CNC router or laser cutter or one of the tools that our school graciously provides. Uh, we also want to recycle some of the subsystems for our old robots. So for example, the intake is one thing. Uh, and uh, just in general, some of the parts uh, and pieces for other robots we want to use on this robot just to be very cost effective, and very resourceful. So I know we're going to be uh, going into the intake in a little bit. So as we uh, move over to uh, Cord here to start speaking about that, uh, I'd love to see what the 2020 robot intake looks like. And then let's compare it to the 2021 as we start to go into that power cell journey. All right. So if you'll take a look at our 2020 robot uh, intake and then at our 2021 robot intake, you'll notice they look very similar with the only major difference in design being just the width of the intake. Uh, we wanted to, we use a pneumatic cylinder here uh, that allows the intake to take hits. Of course, that was more of a priority on the 2020 robot as the 2021 robot hasn't taken any actual hits yet. But we realized that the design that we had in 2020 fit all the needs that we needed and just decided to take it and lift it onto the 2021 robot. Now, going into the hopper and indexer system on the 2021 robot, compared to the 2020 robot, which uses a hot ro dog roller side uh, design, we took some inspiration from Cor Code Orange's design of using brushes that help with uh, very simple design that allow the power cells to be jammed uh, very less often, which was uh, necessary for just using three power cells instead of five. Is a question to ask on that on the brushes in particular. Are, it looks like the, that they're not symmetrical to each other, like they're offset from each other a little bit. Is that intentional or does it not really matter where the brushes are? That was intentional to help 
in order sometimes we notice when the brushes were in line exactly with one another that we'd have two power cells just running against each other never making it through into the actual in, uh, indexer so because of that we realized that if we offset them slightly from one another that we could have one be funneled in and the other come right after it and, and are, are both of those actually rotating inwards, like toward, towards it? Because we've seen some teams, when they have the doubles, that sometimes they'll spin opposite ways uh, sort of thing. But they're actually both rotating a power cell into your, uh, into your indexer, right? Yes, sir. Um, and then are, are there any sensors that you use uh, as it goes in, like beam brakes or anything like that, to like detect the ball or know that you're carrying so many? Uh, no, we do not. So we're going to keep going on uh, with this robot here over to Ethan as we go into the shooter uh, itself and talking about uh, how that works. Uh, uh, so I'd love to hear more. Uh, of course, once again, uh, any changes you made from your 2020 robot going into 2021 uh, and why those changes were made and what success you've seen from it so far. Yeah, so one of the biggest, uh, I guess, kind of changes between shooter designs from this to our last year's robot was that this robot actually has a set of top spinning rollers. We saw this was popular among a lot of the top teams who had really consistent shots. Uh, so we kind of wanted to add that into our own robot. It is driven off our flywheel. So they kind of take advantage of each other. Um, we don't have any discrete fly flywheels on the shooter. Uh, just because it was just three power cells, we didn't need all three. And it's also powered by two Falcons on an abduction. Uh, and the way the shooter actually works is that we have a feeder wheel that connects with our indexer. And this kind of builds off what was Corp, uh, what Corp was talking about. Uh, so brushes are very compliant. Uh, as a result, we didn't need any sensors just because we could run the actual brushes without any fear of jamming. And as a result, all we need to do is spin the speeder wheel in, in order to shoot uh, balls from our real time. Let's keep moving on uh, into uh, Parker, who's going to be speaking more about uh, your swerve and drivetrain that goes into it. I love talking about teams with swerve. So, uh, Parker, tell me a little bit more about what do you have for swerve, uh, anything that makes it unique. And then, uh, of course, uh, I'm not sure if you changed anything from 2020, but uh, any lessons learned from that as well? So uh, this year, we decided to go with a swerve design with our drivetrain. So last year, if we look back at the 2020 robot, we didn't actually have a swerve design because we didn't feel that it'd be very good for that set of challenges. But since we're doing the at-home challenges this year, we felt that the swerve would really be optimal for the uh, auto nav and hyperdrive challenges. And so if I get some assistance here um, showing the swerve, one second. So in 2019, in our off-season, we actually designed this uh, swerve, mo uh, swerve chassis with all the swerve modules. And so... At that point, we made our own custom designs, heavily inspired by uh, 2910's design. And we decided to run with this design for this year because we already had it pre-made. And with a few customizations of motors and encoders, we thought that it would be pretty good for the challenges. Can you, can you talk to me about, um, you know, for let's say there's a team who has never done Swerve before. What would you tell a team like that, you know, from your lessons learned on, you know, this, this is what we've learned if you're looking at getting to it for the first time. Like, these are some uh, common mistakes or common hurdles that you can overcome so you can try Swerve as well. So our biggest suggestion for Swerve for, like, brand new teams coming into it is to not go with the custom design. So with us, we did use a custom design for the majority of it, but we would recommend that teams that are coming into it brand new would not actually use the custom design and actually go with a pre-bought design such that uh, you don't have to make your own uh, different modules and go with that because at the end of the day, it is extremely difficult to um, use our own, our own motor designs and uh, our own encoder designs. And so that took a lot of time for us to do. And we only ended up going with that because of the fact that we had the pre-made modules. And so any new teams coming into it, I would heavily recommend, or we as a whole would heavily recommend going into it uh, either with a swerve ready built from the off season or just buying one off the shelf. So some biggest problems we faced were just alignment and uh, traction with the uh, swerve modules. Well, I appreciate that, uh, that feedback on there. And, and teams, of course, if you're looking at doing it for the first time, lots of good research you can do uh, out there as well, too. So appreciate you hearing, hearing about that, Parker. So let's wrap up uh, with uh, Avery, who's going to be speaking a bit more about the uh, electronics uh, on your robot. I noticed that uh, your PDP is mounted upside down. We're starting to see more and more teams do that uh, as well, too. But uh, take me through uh, uh, some of the electronics on the robot, how they're positioned, and uh, why you chose to go the route you did on this robot. 
so one of the big issues for the 2020 robot was the placement of the PDP and pretty much all the robot, like all the electronics parts in general. Um, we didn't really think too far through the placement of them, like during the mechanical build process, which I think played a role in how much uh, wire we used. As you can see, we had a lot of wires running back and forth between sides of the robot and in front of the uh, indexer, which uh, for encoder cables and um, CAN wires uh, is an issue for interference. So we wanted to simplify the system of robot or system of electronics and uh, kind of control the amount of wire we we're having to use on this one. So uh, we decided to place the PDP under the robot, like you said, but also place the battery under the uh, hopper plate to where we can easily change the vet well easily change the battery and we still have a uh, centralized uh, system of electronics to where we have all of our motor controllers have access to the PDP pretty easily and that uh, we have less wire that we have running between sides and uh, our electronics more sorted out. Well, Avery, appreciate that. And once again, we have uh, 1746 Auto coming out from Cumming, Georgia. So uh, thanks a lot for taking the time to tell us more about your robot and everything that goes into it. And uh, wish your team the best of luck uh, in the future. Hopefully we get to see this uh, uh, play uh, actually on a field somewhere uh, in, in person, but you never know what's going to happen in the future. But if not, good luck to your team in future years. And thanks for taking the time. Awesome. Thanks for having us. It was uh, definitely a good time to be here. Thank you. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting this video. Stryker is looking for current and future FIRST alumni to join their internship program and FIRST mentors who are looking for a great career with a company who actually supports their FIRST journey. Go to careers.stryker.com to learn more. You can also directly support Fun by joining Fun Nation. Click the Join button and just for a few bucks a month, you'll unlock special perks and directly support us so we can keep making great content. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.